Hello everyone, this is Ray Space and Kerbal Space Program with Realism Overhaul, where I have another one of those suggestions for how to use Super Heavy that appeared in the comments to my video on the shuttle on Super Heavy, and this is the Methalox shuttle on Super Heavy. Uh, so this is using methane and oxygen with the shuttle using uh, Raptor engines, which I have to put on because I just added gimbling to the Raptor vacuum engines, right? That's important. We can't have the normal not-so-gimbling Raptor vacuum engines. But yes, we're going to use methane and oxygen and see what we get. And we're just going to have three of the Raptor vacuum engines, and of course we're going to tuck them in. And they have about the same amount of thrust as the Space Shuttle main engines. But that's not all that great when you think about it, because the methane doesn't get as much performance. And so to get the same amount of delta V, we need to have more methane and oxygen. So the load is heavier. And if we take a look at what we have here right now, all right, we're about a thousand tons, but you can see the thrust weight ratio. That's a bit of a problematic thrust weight ratio, isn't it? And I don't know exactly how to tweak that. You'll note the tank placement, and that's because of course we need the engines to point through the center of mass of the whole thing, which is right there right now. I've given them 10 degrees of gimbling now, but whether that can hold is a good question. Unlike the hydrogen and oxygen tank the shuttle normally has, uh, this doesn't have the same sort of balance. In the hydrogen oxygen tank, the oxygen is much, 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 much heavier than the hydrogen, even though the hydrogen is taking up a larger volume. And as a result, that pulls the center mass up, making it easier for the engines to point through it. Uh, here, the methane isn't that much lighter than the oxygen. Now, I've got the bottom tank straining first. Um, I didn't put the oxygen alone at the top, maybe I should, but we'll try this out first. But you'll know I've still pull it, I put it higher up and we could put it even higher up, though the umbilicals are going to have to stretch a bit. Uh, I'm actually just using the little decoupler I enabled cross speed on it. Uh, and that's the reason why we have this long sort of thing going on here, because we need to get the tank all the way up there in order to preserve the balance, but we also don't want the body flap to clip into Super Heavy. So, yeah. That is the situation. But I would like to emphasize, because it did come up in the comments to one of the previous videos, uh, methane, methane is not as good as hydrogen. <laughs> um, uh, it, it's more convenient for certain applications, it's nice and dense and all, uh, well, denser than hydrogen anyway, but for other applications, it's not so great. And this is one of those times. Uh, this is one of those times, and going to the moon is one of those times. Uh, going to anywhere with water in general, but not methane is, is a thing. Methane is good for Mars and good for Titan, uh, but generally speaking, if we're really going to make it out there in space, we really need to figure out how to store hydrogen more effectively. I know it's difficult, but it's something we've got to do, because hydrogen is the most abundant resource in the universe, and it would be a shame if we couldn't use it. Uh, so it is something that if you're really serious about a space exploration, we're going to need to be able to use the most abundant resource in the universe in the most effective way possible. So I do hear some people sort of dismissing hydrogen sometimes, and that's not a, a good instinct to have when it comes to space. Orange foam. Yes, we want orange foam in this case, just for the heck of it. I know, it's not, it's not a hydrogen tank, but we're putting orange foam anyway. Sorry, wings. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll talk about other ways to place the tanks later. Let's just get this baseline out of the way, because we're talking about what kind of payload capacity we've got. Right now, I've got 50 tons in the bay, because I don't think it can carry more than that. But we'll see. I mean, I might be wrong about that. Right now, I don't even know if it's going to be balanced or not. So, uh, 50 tons of water there. All right, well, we can watch it launch without the UI there. Oh, I forgot to aim camera. So yeah, again, it's not necessary for the shuttle to light its engines. Even with the Hydrolox one, it wasn't necessary. 
the shuttle is so comparatively light, you know, compared to Super Heavy, that the fact that it's hanging off the side really doesn't matter all that much. Now, the aerodynamics of this might be very different from how it is in real life, of course. And in real life, they have to deal with the gusts, you know, wind and such. And then the shuttle wings might be more important, but then are they really that much bigger than Starship's fins? I don't think so. I mean, when you combine both sets of fins and you look at this, I don't think the shuttle wings are that much bigger. They are off to one side, so that does make a difference. Okay, staging. I didn't pre-light the engines this time, actually, so this could be dangerous. Oh, um... Oh, okay, the engines are still not tilted enough. Maybe I'll just light them on the ground. This is, um... This has gone a bit chaotic. Okay. Let's revert to launch. I'll just light the light the Raptor vacuums on the ground. Now, they don't have very good efficiency on the ground, but they actually can light on the ground because of their high chamber pressure. They do not have flow separation on the ground. Okay, off it goes, but after a little while I'll light the Raptors. Okay. Uh, it still can't hold it. First of all, I'd like to know how much we had left in here. Uh, we have enough, probably. I mean, normally I look at the surface velocity. It's really the horizontal surface velocity that we're worried about. Well, we can take a look and see whether it actually does the boost back burn completely. But, so... Most a part of this is not horizontal, part of it is vertical. And if we take a look at the surface info, well, now it's we can see a thousand two hundred, so it's about three hundred less than this number was the surface horizontal speed. So, taking that into consideration, we have to burn it off and then basically burn the other way by nearly the same amount, not quite that much. Oh, but it's trying to go back to Boca Chica. Oh, no. Okay, right. It's not being told to try to go back to the Cape, but Boca Chica. So, that wouldn't be good. It definitely could reach the Cape right now, no problems, if it was trying to go to the Cape. But you can see the heading. The heading's actually to Boca Chica, uh, or, yeah, I think Boca Chica is where it's trying to go. That's why it's heading like that. So, okay, let's set that aside, but it certainly reserved enough fuel. Uh, Alright, uh, no, it's still pitching. I don't know why I lit the OMS engines. But it's not pitching so much that I think... I did use most of that. Uh, let me just put the oxygen on top. Okay... Okay, I think we're going finally. Oh, we don't need the OMS engine, stop that. Oh, but now it's pushing us too much. Uh, yeah, now it's the other way around. If I put a book up to the screen, it looks like we're pretty close, but not quite. We're not in an orthographic view. We're not, like, dead on. Well, now, the problem with the version with the tanks over the wings is that we can't light the Raptor vacuums right away unless we put it on the side of Super Heavy, which is a whole other thing. Then we have to have a cone on top of Super Heavy. And I don't think Super Heavy can balance with it on the side because this is then a thousand tons. It's not uh, just the shuttle hanging off to the side and it's also closer to the bottom. It's easier for the Raptors at the bottom to point through the center of mass if the shuttle's closer to the top. Uh, if it's 
you know, on the side of Super Heavy down here-ish, then that's not quite as easy and there'll be a thousand tons because the tank mass is not directly over Super Heavy, it's also going to be off to the side. So we can't really put it on the side, we have to put it on top and if it's put on top then the Raptor vacuum engines can't light ahead of time to burn some of this off. Uh, so we can't make this as voluminous because the thrust weight ratio isn't as good or we can sneak some sea level engines on. Um, like it's really squeezing. <laughs> but right here somewhere that might have helped the other version too. Especially I don't trust that the vacuum engines were gimbling at all even though I have the I have the gimbling on but okay now we have more of a starship kind of thrust we are missing one of the engines but you can just barely squeeze them on the back I I'm definitely doing this because I know somebody's gonna suggest it so uh, I know I know I know you're gonna suggest it I, uh, you're probably gonna suggest that we fill the whole back end with the sea level ones though they don't have the same specific impulse of course uh, but they're not all that bad uh, so yeah, we have it like this and the other thing is we have to have a mounting point but I can just, I don't know if it's going to be stable or not but I can just sneak a real attachment point in the middle here it's not going to be pretty but we can try it alright, and for reference these tanks oh that, that isn't good, these tanks are 5.4 meters in diameter let me just Tractor chopsticks. Okay, well, we'll try Mephalox Shuttle 2 here. Alright. Off we go. It's, uh, it looks really weird from this view, that's for sure. Alright, how is it this time? Ah! Uh, well, we're gonna have to get that better. Alright. Okay, finally some balance here. Let me shut down the OMS engine switch lit. Alright. Well, pitch seems balanced. Super Heavy is going back, but it's trying to get back to Boca Chica still. And we're at 2000. We should have enough for orbit. And we're carrying 50 tons. But let's just see. And then once I see how much we have extra we can adjust the payload for that. Well, it's doing a rollover thing. Uh, it's gone crazy and things have exploded. Ah. Uh, we lost one, I think one engine crashed into another engine or something. It's not supposed to, oh, explode due to overheating. Well, I mean, that's the adapter over there. Um, come on, the Raptor engines are supposed to be like clusterable and they're like really close together. They're not supposed to overheat like that. Okay, fine, um, shut down engine. Maybe these three can handle it now? No, probably not. And I swear, the vacuum engine gimbling just doesn't happen. I mean, do they look like they're gimbling at all? They don't look like they're gimbling at all, do they? I think that's been my problem the whole time. These things aren't gimbling. Yeah. Do you see them gimbling? I don't see them gimbling. So, I eventually got a fix for the gimbals and tried it out during a live stream. The problem was that Pekka had removed the gimbal transform that the gimbal module requires, but the gimbal module was still there, fooling me into thinking that there was 
a gimbal. Uh, so anyway, the gimbal transform that you have to put into Unity or Blender uh, was restored and I was set to figure things out. If you had been suggesting RCS Build Aid, uh, well, I used RCS Build Aid during the stream and I did the best I could to try and moderate the angle between the two situations while the shuttle would be flying free. Uh, so when the external tank is full of fuel and then when it's empty, but it just doesn't work. Uh, I'll have to see what we can do about that, but even with 10 degrees of gimbal, and they really do gimbal now, uh, that was not working out. So we have the version with the external tanks on the side of the shuttle, and here's how that went. So no changes except for the fact that we have the gimbling vacuum engines and we do still have the two sea level ones on the side because we need the thrust weight ratio in this case since we aren't lighting the vacuum engines early and so five engines shutting off the OMS engines which keep going on apparently because uh, the script is expecting to do something with Starship that has uh, that action group assigned so rolling over was the problem during the earlier tests and this time I think it was because the engines were colliding with each other or something because of the gimbal or getting so close that they heated each other up. In this case they still gimbaled quite a lot and got really close to each other but managed not to explode. So sorry for the earlier part where of course we didn't have gimbals so it's sort of a silly testing but I said so much about the logic behind things that I didn't want to lose that. So yeah, here we have a success. We have finally gotten into orbit with 50 tons. Looking at how much fuel was left in the external tanks, I don't think I could carry much more. So the Hydrolox version is better. Uh, it was able to carry 70 tons with the standard external tank, but 50 tons with this version. And well, if we really wanted to do this, we could change it quite a lot more. And maybe I'll think of creating a completely custom shuttle, but everybody likes the STS shuttle so there is a certain cachet in using this particular model uh, this particular look with things so yeah I don't know if we should do any more with it uh, with super heavy and the shuttle I mean uh, I think this satisfies my curiosity but maybe you guys have some other suggestions but for now Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.